Hello, welcome. I'm Jen, a guide with Footprints of London. Today, I'm wearing a green hat, as you can see. It's my homage to Michael Arlen, whose novel, The Green Hat, published in 1924, catapulted him to fame and fortune. He's somewhat slipped into obscurity since. But in the 1920s, he was a noted figure in society. He was a dandy, noted for his immaculate dress and impeccable manners, racing round London in his yellow Rolls Royce. His life and his writing epitomized the bright young things era. He also influenced other writers of the time, Evelyn Moore in his first novel, published in 1928, Decline and Fall, said, all London rang with the spirit of Mr. Arlen, but who was he? Let's follow the green hat and find out. He was born Dikran Kuyumjan in Bulgaria in 1895. He was the fifth and youngest child of an Armenian merchant family. In 1901, fleeing persecution, the family moved to England. Young Dikran, as he was then, was educated at Malvern College and his family assumed he would go on to university at Oxford. But he decided to go to Edinburgh to study medicine. After a year, during which he apparently did a lot of drinking and not much else, he decided medicine was not for him and moved to London with the aim of making his living as a writer. This was 1913. A year later, when the First World War broke out, he had a problem. He was disowned by Bulgaria as he refused to join the Bulgarian army, but he was regarded with suspicion by the British authorities as Bulgaria was an ally of Germany and so an enemy country. This meant he was unable to become a naturalised British citizen or to change his name. He spent the war in the company of other modernist writers who'd been denied military service or were regarded suspiciously. Aldous Huxley had volunteered to join up but was rejected due to his eyesight. He was half blind in one eye. D. H. Lawrence had a German-born wife and was suspected of spying for the enemy in Zena, Cornwall. Michael Arlen wrote essays, short stories and book reviews, published mainly in a British literary magazine, The New Age. In 1920, a collection of semi-autobiographical essays, originally published in The New Age, were published as a collection, The London Venture. Although they'd first been published under his birth name, for this collection he assumed the name Michael Arlen. He explains the reason for this assumed name in his Apologia Pro Nomine Meo, which prefaces the book. He says, Out of consideration to such readers as may read this book, I have assumed a name by which they may refer to me in the same manner at least twice running, a feat of pronunciation which few of my English acquaintances have performed with my natal name. But there is also another reason. I have been told that there are writers whose works would have been famous if their names could have been familiarly pronounced. Polish and Russian writers for the most part, I gather. In changing my name, I have, I hope, robbed my readers of their last excuse for my obscurity. In 1922, he became a naturalised British citizen and officially changed his name. He published further collections of short stories concerning the follies, misadventures and gallantries of these charming people about Mayfair society in the 1920s. Barclay Square, the heart of Mayfair. At the very mention of the name, a song may come to your lips. Here's a clue. It's a song about people meeting, angels dining and a nightingale singing in Berkeley Square. Eric Mashwitz, who wrote the lyrics in 1939, credits the Michael Allen short story When the Nightingale Sang in Berkeley Square as the inspiration for the song's title. The story is a supernatural tale of a man and a woman who live in a house on the square, not, like the song, a love story. It begins. There is a tale that is told in London about a nightingale, how it did this and that, 
and finally, for no apparent reason, rested and sang in Berkeley Square. A well-known poet, critic and commentator heard it, and it is further alleged that he was sober. Some men, of course, now say that it was not a nightingale at all, but only the south wind singing in the trees of the square. But it is a fact that some men will say anything. And some men have formed a St James's Square school of thought. But it was in Berkeley Square that the poet, critic and commentator, who was sober, distinctly heard the song of the nightingale on a night in the heart of the drought of the year 1921. In the drawing room of a house midway on the entailed side of the square sat a lady and a gentleman silently. If you want to know what happens to them, you'll have to read the story for yourself. Back to the green hat. <clears throat> the opening of the novel is set in Shepherd Market. Michael Arlen lived there in rooms opposite the Grapes pub in the 1920s. At that time, it was a somewhat seedy bohemian area, a haunt of prostitutes and gamblers, and also popular with writers and artists. It is here that the unnamed narrator of the novel first encounters femme fatale Iris Storm, the mysterious and ultimately tragic heroine of the story, with her green hat and yellow hispano suiza car. Looking out of his window, he sees a long, low, yellow car which shone like a battle chariot. It was empty. This car charmed the eye like a huge yellow insect that had dropped to earth from a butterfly civilization. This car, gallant and suave, rested in the lowly silence of the shepherd market night. Downwards to my door I looked, and there was a green hat before my door. The light from the one lamp in Sheep Street fell about it, and that was how I saw it was a green hat, of a sort of felt, and bravely worn, being no doubt one of those that women who have many hats affect, Paul Spore. The novel follows the narrator's pursuit of her and her car around London and Europe. It was the Michael Arlen connection that inspired Anthony Pohl to move to Shepherd Market when he came to London in 1926. The narrator, Nick Jenkins, is living there in a buyer's market, the second volume of Dance to the Music of Time. Michael Arlen continued to write, but never achieved the recognition he had won with the green hat. He moved to France in the late 1920s, married a Greek aristocrat, Countess Atlanta McCarty. They had two children, a son and a daughter. The family moved briefly back to England at the start of World War II and Michael Arlen was appointed Civil Defence Public Relations Officer for the East Midlands. But when his loyalty to England was questioned by Parliament in 1941, he resigned and moved to America. He settled in New York in 1946 and suffered from writer's block for the last ten years of his life. Michael Arlen, along with Evelyn Waugh, Anthony Pohl and Nancy Mitford, feature in my literary romp, Mayfair's Bright Young Things. I'll be offering it just as soon as we're able to get back on the streets. So look out for my schedule on my Footprints of London profile page. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you again soon. Bye.